Shut the fuck up and listen to me! Welcome to Hashtag Dave Speaks. Welcome back, welcome back. This is another episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks. I have no guest this time, it is just me kicking it old school, like how it used to be. Just a, just a man and his microphone. This week on Hashtag Dave Speaks, I'm going to go over cut day for the New England Patriots and a lot of the moves that they made. A lot of trades, a lot of cuts. Uh, interesting day. Kind of went a little bit like I thought it would. In a weird way, but not, I'm not going to predict, I'm not going to say that I predicted all this. There's a lot lot of moves to get into, so I'm going to get into what I'm surprised by, what I figured would happen, and where I think the Patriots stand now. Two weeks ago on Hashtag Day Speaks, I had my buddy Kevin come on, and we talked about what to expect from the New England Patriots this season. And I don't think that a lot has changed since, except for the fact that Edelman's out for the season course that's that shakes the the fundamental ground of the New England Patriots but I also believe that they are as well equipped as ever to deal with an injury such as Julian Edelman's but that's also kind of tough to tell Julian Edelman is easily Tom Brady's favorite target he does love him some Rob Gronkowski that's also true but there's a number difference which I don't have in front of me from last year. When Grunk was out, or even the past two years, when Grunk was out compared to when Edelman was out, the points per game the points per game were down with Grunk. The yards per game, the yards per attempt, the amount of first downs, all that stuff really, really took a hit when Edelman went down. So sure. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get by without Julian Edelman this year, but better now than later. I think getting guys like Brandon Cooks involved, Chris Hogan involved, Danny Amendola involved, Malcolm Mitchell even, he just came back from injury, was able to practice this week. It's it's those guys that now can earn the trust of Tom Brady before the season started as opposed to on the fly. And I feel like I feel like there's one more major, major injury coming for the New England Patriots, and I don't know what it is yet. Because I'm not God. <laughs> you know, I mean like there's no way I would know who, but it just I feel like I feel like the drama isn't over for the New England Patriots this year. And I don't just mean in game drama. I don't just mean Adversity, like the Super Bowl, you know, something like that. Not like being down 25. I don't mean that. I mean, like, maybe Rom Gudkowski. Maybe Brandon Cooks. Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> but I just feel like that there's... The story hasn't been told yet on the 2017 Patriots, and nor as it should have, since it hasn't even started yet. But we will go through the roster here. So in some things that I was surprised by, they didn't carry three quarterbacks. And not only did they not carry three quarterbacks, they didn't cut any of them. They traded Jacoby Brissett to the Indianapolis Colts for wide receiver Philip Dorsett. Surprise move. They could add a third quarterback to the practice squad, you know, pick up another guy's cut, something like that, another team's cut. But Philip Dorsett, some say bust, some say untapped. Depends on your perspective. Philip Dorsett to burner. It's quick. It's a first round pick by the Indianapolis Colts two years ago. He had like 33 catches, 500 something yards last year, two touchdowns, nothing impressive, nothing that overwhelmed you, but also Andrew Luck was hurt a lot last year. Get the guy a real quarterback for 16 games, let's see what he does. How involved is he going to be? So two quarterbacks make the roster. 
for 2017 so far. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, Bill's infamous for adding people after cut day. And I think he left a few names on this list to be cut in case they like someone else more. Now, the running back situation, I'm not surprised at all. We'll go over that in a little bit. Wide receiver position, now you add in Philip Dorsett. You lose Julian Edelman. They do have six wide receivers, technically, because Matthew Slater does classify as a wide receiver on the depth chart. They have Danny Amendola, Brandon Cooks, Philip Dorsett, Chris Hogan, Malcolm Mitchell, and Matthew Slater. What I find interesting about this, Austin Carr was cut. A lot of people think that he would make a great uh, practice squad player, but I think he had such a good week one of preseason and a good week four of preseason that he's probably going to wind up on another team. He'll probably be claimed. They have four tight ends. They don't technically have a fullback on their depth chart, but if they did, it'd be James Devlin. The other three tight ends are Dwayne Allen, Rob Gronkowski, and Jacob Hollister. Hollister is one of the four undrafted free agents to make the 53-man roster. He was kept in favor of tight end James O'Shaughnessy. So Hollister makes the team. The other Hollister brother did not at the wide receiver position. Offensive line consists of eight players. David Andrews, Marcus Cannon, Cole Croston, Cameron Fleming, Shaq Mason, Nate Solder, Joe Tooney, and Adrian Waddle. Croston was a surprise inclusion to some. Nesson.com spoke to an NFL scout earlier this summer who said that the undrafted free agent would be claimed if waived. He's the Patriots' top interior offensive line backup. The Patriots surprisingly waived second-year pro Ted Karras. And that's your offense. Eight offensive linemen, four tight ends, one of them being your fullback, six wide receivers, four running backs, two quarterbacks. Let's see, that is 10, 12, that is another 12. That's 24 of your 53 players on your offense. Defensive line. Eight defensive linemen. Kind of felt like they had some depth issues there. I look at this list and I wonder if they actually do have any issues there. They did make a trade on the defensive line. They gave up their fifth and their seventh round pick for defensive end Cassius Marsh from the Seattle Seahawks. So that's good. Their defensive line consists of defensive tackle Alan Branch, defensive tackle Malcolm Brown, defensive lineman Adam Butler, defensive end Trey Flowers, defensive tackle Lawrence Guy, defensive end Cassius Marsh, defensive tackle Vince Valentine, defensive end Dietrich Wise Jr. They also have eight linebackers. <laughs> eight. So we'll get into that. Uh, let's see. Marquise Flowers, David Harris, Dante Hightower, Brandon King, Harvey Langey, Lang, Langey, Langey, Shea McClellan, Landon Roberts, and Kyle Van Noy. The Patriots acquired Flowers in a trade. That's Marquise Flowers with the Cincinnati Bengals earlier in the week, and McClellan is a player who could land on IR later this week, which would open up another spot on the roster. Keep your eyes on that. If they IR, Shea McClellan, look for potentially... Maybe a special teamer, something like that. But but Shane McClellan seems like the kind of guy that will create a space for them here in the coming week. They did bring on 10 defensive backs, which is Joe Bade-Mossy, Malcolm Butler, Patrick Chung, Nate Ebner, Stephon Gilmore, Dron Harmon, Jonathan Jones, Devin McCourty, Jordan Richards, and cornerback Eric Rowe. You may notice there's a name that isn't there, and that's Cyrus Jones. Patriots should be happy to get one of the rookie cornerbacks, either Kenny Moore or DJ Killings on the practice squad. Bade Mosey, acquired from the Lions, provides cornerback depth and a special teams prowess. Special teams, Ryan Allen, Joe Cardona, Stephen Gostowski. On the injured reserve is Cyrus Jones. So they did not cut Cyrus Jones. He's just not on the list because he's on IR. So Derek Rivers, Julian Edelman, Cyrus Jones are all on injured reserve and they are all out with an ACL tear and out for the season. Non-football injury would be defensive end Keontae Davis and offensive tackle Andrew Jelks. Davis and Jelks were eligible, are eligible to return after eight weeks. 
in a non-football illness. Offensive tackle Antonio Garcia. Garcia can also be added to the active roster after eight weeks. Now, if they do that, what three guys aren't there? be interesting to see if Austin Carr clears waivers. Uh, Cyrus Jones is an interesting one. I, I know they drafted him. They like him, but they hate him. I think they hate him a lot. They want him to go away without having to be the ones that drafted him and wasted him. Two, three years can go by now. You can let him go. It just never worked out, i.e. Razai Dowling, i.e. Uh, who was the guy? Who was the guy? Man, that's going to drive me crazy now. Defensive lineman from Florida had two torn ACLs when they drafted him. But that guy. <clears throat> now, what I'm not surprised about is the fact that Brandon Bolden was traded. Not traded, I'm sorry. Was released. Brandon Bolden was a surprise release. Brandon Bolden was a surprise release. For now, he could be back with the Patriots. Place players who they hope to bring back on injured reserve later this weekend. I could have told you the day they signed Rex Burkhead, which I did, on the Boston Sports Nerds podcast, that Rex Burkhead was going to take Brandon Bolden's job. I'm surprised that Deion Lewis is still here. Joe from Joe's Fantasy Field Goal and one-third of the nerds, he gassed me up on Deion Lewis being gone, being hashtag bye byes I was like, yeah, maybe he is. But I forgot. I let Joe get in my head. Because when the Pittsburgh Steelers played the New England Patriots two years ago, (coughs) and Deion Lewis fumbled the football, and on the next series they gave it right back to him, I turned to my buddy Kevin, who was on last episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks, I said, man, they really like that kid. He said, how how can you tell? And I said, because when... (laughs) He didn't just get the Stephen Ridley treatment. He fumbled, coughed it up in a bad area, like in the red zone or something. And they gave it right back to him. So I know the Patriots like Deion Lewis. I knew that. I've known that for two years. I was right about Deion Lewis then. I'm right about Deion Lewis now. I was wrong in letting Joe tell me that he thinks he's going to be gone because they have Gillis Lee Burkhead, Lewis, White, Bolden at the time. Were they going to bring Blunt back? No, they didn't. Okay, whatever. Deion Lewis is still on this team. Brandon Bolden's not. That was my initial thought when they brought in Rex Burkhead was that he was going to be a special teams guy and be able to contribute a little bit more on offense than Brandon Bolden did in recent history. This Patriots roster looks good. It would look a lot better if they had Julian Edelman, for sure. But the Patriots look fine. The Patriots look fine. Danny Amendola, Brandon Cooks, Chris Hogan, Malcolm Mitchell, Rob Gronkowski, Dwayne Allen. There's a name that's missing there, and it's Julian Edelman, but there's nothing we can do about that. Jacoby Brissett, gone. Now that intrigues me a little bit, because now I wonder... What do you do this off season? Does the Jacoby Brissett trade mean Tom Brady staying forever? Or does it mean that Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy and now you need to find a new backup? To me, it screams that Brady's staying. Because if Brady was going to go... you would think you would want Brissett to be there. But I don't know. I don't know. If Brady's staying, you could trade Garoppolo and you would keep Brissett. Right? Right? 
Garoppolo's got to have higher trade value than Jacoby Brissett. He has to. It's not as high as it was last year, but it's still got to be higher. It's got to be more. It's got to be worth more. Jacoby Brissett <laughs> was accountable for five touchdowns this past week against the New York Giants in a tremendous comeback that they wound up blowing at the end of the game there. Was that it? Was that all the NFL needed was to see a five-touchdown game? And they'd say, okay, that's it. What have you done for me lately? Recency bias in full effect. Jacoby Brissett will probably start for the Indianapolis Colts until what comes back. I'd have to feel that way. I, I have to feel like he's... I don't know. I don't know what this means. Brady Garoppolo. That saga just got a lot thicker for me. Really got peppered on. The running backs look really good. I think Mike Gillisley is going to have a really good year. Deion Lewis is going to interfere with the James White production, which sucks for me because I I thought James White was going to have a really good fantasy year, like a low-key, sneaky sleeper type player. But with Deion Lewis still there, you know he's going to take some of that. <clears throat> but both those guys could be on the field at the same time, which is interesting. You could put Deion Lewis in the backfield, James White lined up at receiver, or vice versa. You could put Gillis Lee at running back and either one of those two in the slot. They have so much flexibility this year with this roster. I think having that third tight end was a no-brainer. I'm surprised they cut Matt Langle a couple weeks ago, a week back, whatever, how long, however long ago that was. But Jacob Hollister had a really good week five or week four. Played a really good game with uh, Brissett. So I have no problem with him being on the team. Dwayne Allen's going to be good for them. Ah, man. The Brandon Bolden one. People that are like, oh no, Brandon Bolden. Why? Because he does kickoff coverage really well? So can Rex Burkhead. I'm also, I'm watching live right now the Florida State-Alabama game, and it's unreal how good of a program Alabama is. Not to turn that, like, into this hashtag Dave Speaks, but... They block two kicks, and they just, <laughs> they do everything, like, so well. Playing against Florida State was the number three ranked school right now, and it's just like, Jesus. They just make everybody look so bad. You can just tell there's, like, a bunch of professionals on Alabama. There's, like, one or two pros on other schools. Anyway, back to the Patriots. What does Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo being the only two quarterbacks mean this Patriots team going with two QBs, which is not abnormal for Bill Belichick or the New England Patriots. The two quarterbacks is actually quite the norm. They went with three quarterbacks last year, let's face it, because one of them was going to be suspended for for 40 games. And, oh yeah, that one of them was your starting quarterback. (laughs) So that was a no-brainer. Two quarterbacks doesn't bother me. It's who the two quarterbacks are. Because I felt like if it was going to be Brady, I've gone back and forth on this. I feel like if it's going to be Brady that's going to be your quarterback for the you know next three years, four years, you would have traded Garoppolo. If it's going to be Garoppolo, who's the quarterback for the next three or four years, Does that mean that they trade Brady, get a backup, and a couple picks? Can you imagine that? That that newspaper, that headline, Tom Brady traded for... uh, Who's a a good backup quarterback right now? Um, Traded for Brock Osweiler and two second-round picks. People would say, fuck those picks. Tom Brady was traded for Brock Osweiler. And the picks would become so 
fucking irrelevant, it'd be ridiculous. Because people like names. They don't like unidentified flying objects. They don't like that. They, they like names. They like things that they know. And people would latch onto that. Brock Osweiler traded for Tom Brady. <laughs> so if it's going to be Tom Brady that's going to be the odd man out and they're going to go with Garoppolo here in the near future, then who's your backup quarterback? A guy like Brock Osweiler? Holy cow. Brian Hoyer, someone like that. Tom Brady traded for Brian Hoyer in, in a second and a third. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. I don't. To me, I want Tom Brady every year that he says he wants to be quarterback. That's my quarterback. Like, not to get on a Terrell Owens type rip here, but if Tom Brady says, hey guys, I want to play quarterback for the next nine years, then Tom Brady is going to be my quarterback for the next nine years. If I have anything to do with it, which I don't. But in my mind, that'll be my quarterback forever until the day he stops he says I stop I quit I'm done and the brutal brutal truth is is that with Bill Belichick he might trade him he might trade him if Bill plans on being the coach or being involved for longer than Tom Tom is gonna be traded which is nuts to me, but I understand it. Brock Osweiler in a second and a third. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hollister is your new third tight end. I don't like that they put James Devlin in as a tight end. I wish they just had like fullbacks. They had one and then three tight ends. I don't like that they that says four tight ends and one of them is James Devlin. I look at that receiving core now. Hogan, Amendola, Cooks, Dorsett. And, I, and Dorsett's an addition as of like, you know, nine hours ago. For some reason, that doesn't feel as good. I know we lost Edelman. And, with, and before, it was like, oh man, Edelman, Cooks, Hogan, Gronk. Oh God, this team is so loaded. You lost one of them. You brought in another guy. And now that just doesn't sound like... It doesn't feel great. I don't feel like there's a ton of weapons there right now. Cooks, yeah. Hogan, sure. Dorsett, maybe. Gronk, yeah. As long as he's healthy, yeah. This team feels like it's on the bubble of not being as great as it fell all off season. I'm also a big believer, like, those that win May, May and June, whatever, April, May and June, free agency period, whenever that time is, those that win the off season never win in the regular season or in the postseason, whatever the saying is. Those that win the off season don't win the postseason. And I do agree with that. I think the ones that spend a ton of money and bring every big name, superstar talent in, remember Philadelphia's dream team? Remember that? Shit, it ha- it happens in a lot of a lot of sports too. I mean, the Lakers' dream team. Super teams in the NBA are a little different right now, but in the NFL, this this Patriots off season felt like a. An off season where you win the off season, but are they going to win the postseason? And you got to say, yeah, right. Who in the AFC is better than them? You start looking around, though. I think Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree and Marshawn Lynch and I, I forget—is it Rivera? The Raiders tight end. Those guys don't sound that bad compared to Hogan, Cooks, Gronk, and Gillisley. What about Antonio Brown? 
Martavis Bryant. <laughs> Miller. Is it Miller? Who's the tight end for the Steelers now? I don't know. Not Miller. But shit, Le'Veon Bell. Is that worse than Cooks, Hogan, Gronk, Gillisley? I think this Patriots team is going to be fine. I think this Patriots team is going to win a lot of games. But just scrolling through the roster tonight, I felt underwhelmed for some reason. Because it felt like there was so much buzz. There was so much to do, so much ta-da. And now it's sort of just like, oh, guys like Jacob Hollister on the roster. Good player, undrafted. Undrafted twin. I don't know. Philip Dorsett, I like. I like for what you got. I mean, if he's going to be your third quarterback and you get Philip Dorsett, that's fine. Like, you get that in exchange for your third quarterback. And it's not a bad deal for Indianapolis either because they're in need of a quarterback. So, it's a good trade. Brandon Bolden. Cut. Yeah, no, okay. That figures. Water's wet, fire's hot, sky's blue, grass is green. Rex Burke, you signed Rex Burkhead to do that job. You guys tell me. Were you surprised by anything that came up? Was Cut Day a large large like blindside hit to anyone does anyone feel walloped <laughs> or overwhelmed or just taken taken by surprise by today Jacoby Brissett sure yeah I didn't see that coming Brandon Bolden yeah I did see that coming Jacob Hollister on the team Cyrus Jones on the IR I love that I like that move a lot. I feel like this team is just, hmm, I don't know. For some odd reason, I feel underwhelmed by the results of the roster today. And if anything, I should feel the exact opposite. I knew Bolden was cut. That makes sense to me. They acquired a a potential wide receiver with a high ceiling, low risk low, or low risk, high reward type of receiver to make up for the Edelman that you lost. You're not going to completely replace Julian Edelman with Phil Dorsett. No way. And I'm not saying that by any means. But what I'm saying is that he's catches for you. He's plays made for you as opposed to Jacoby Brissett, who's going to be sitting on the bench as your third string quarterback. So if anything, you acquired another weapon After you lost one like Julian Edelman, that's a good move. The offense got better today. It didn't get worse. And for some reason, I just don't feel wowed like I thought I would. Maybe it's Austin Carr. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what it is. But for some reason, I don't feel like... I don't feel as good right now looking at the roster as I did it like as the offseason was going on. Like, oh my god, we got this guy and that guy and this guy and that guy. Maybe it's all Julian Edelman. Maybe the fact that Julian Edelman's not a part of the mix hurts a, a lot more than I thought it would. Who knows? But, <laughs> you tell me. How did, how did the Patriots roster... You know, their cut day roster, now they're down to 53 guys. How how do you feel about it? You can hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash bsnerds. You can hit me up on Twitter at bsnerds. On Instagram at bsnerds. You can leave comments on any of the posts on Facebook. Get involved in our polls on a weekly basis so we can, uh, so you can be a part of the results on our weekly social media second, which we do on the Boston Sports Nerds podcast, which go listen to, by the way. Go check that podcast out. I also want to say thank you to Aaron and Jerry for putting out another great show last week. I really like falling in the off weeks of their shows because they put together a really great podcast. 
and then Joe's fantasy field goal, all the perfect fantasy football advice comes to you every Tuesday, I believe, coming starting next week. He normally gets stuff Tuesday night and Wednesday, but I think he's going to hit the Tuesday morning deadline. So that way you can get all your waiver wire tips and advice the day before the waiver wire opens up. Or, I'm sorry, not opens up, closes up. <laughs> so you can get all your claims, waiver claims in on Tuesdays after listening to Joe's fantasy field goal. He did miss last week. He's got a bunch of shit going on. Give the guy a break. The Boston Sports Nerds Podcast will be implementing more and more segments. As time goes on here, I think all three of us are just chomping at the bit for the Patriots season to start. We're really, really excited for that. I was actually, this whole Dave Speaks was going to be about Chris Sale and about how how he sort of feels like this era's Pedro Martinez for Red Sox fans being like the strikeout king that he is in Major League Baseball right now. And as I was trying to put together a point about Chris Sale being like Pedro, I felt <laughs> I felt sick. Like I can't do that. Chris Sale's really good. But I hate when I hate when we force comparisons on people and we can't just enjoy them for what they are. He doesn't have to be the next Pedro, he can be the first Chris Sale. <clears throat> he can be the youngest pitcher to 1,500 strikeouts without having to be like Pedro Martinez. He already did that. He did that on his own, being him. <sighs> I don't know. Dorsett, Amendola. I feel like Amendola's going to get hurt. He always does. I know I'm jumping right back into this, but Amendola's always hurt. Malcolm Mitchell, the great unknown, really good rookie year. Do we run into a sophomore slump with him? I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see how this plays out. And if you guys, if, if anyone here thinks I'm fucking crazy and you're going to tell me, Dave, they're fucking loaded. They're going to win the goddamn Super Bowl. They might go undefeated. Then tell me, just tell me that. And talk me off the ledge here. Because for some reason I feel like this is just very underwhelming. I still think they're going to be good. Don't get me wrong. I still have them at like 14 and 2, 15 and 1. 14 and 2, probably. I still think they're going to be really fucking good. My my opinion of of how the Patriots are going to perform this season hasn't changed. All that's changed is like how how much my my like how much the butterflies in my stomach flutter when I go through their roster and it, it just flutters less. That's all I mean. My heart rate isn't at like 200 like it was during the off season. It's like I have like a resting 100 heart rate, which I don't know if that's healthy or not. But <laughs> that's that's probably more accurate. I just I, I I wish I was more excited. But I am excited for the season. And just to go out and watch Tom Brady put it together this year. Hopefully this team will go out and win a bunch of games, take another Super Bowl. That's all I can ask for. Guys, this has been another episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks. Tell me what you think. Is this roster, were the roster cuts what you thought they'd be? Were you blindsided? Did Bill Belichick just punch you in the face with something you didn't see coming? Or is it just in Bill we trust like usual? All right, guys, I'll be back in two weeks, and I'll talk to you then.